This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in him. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day and this is his way that the Lord has made. Oh, yes, this is the way he has made. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this August 9. August 9, wow. I love the month of August. There's such a harvest to come in, and we need a harvest of souls, don't we? That's the harvest we really need. Bringing people unto the Lord. And uh, I'd like to start this day off. I took just a small peek at some uh, Facebook things. And I saw the picture of this man who put together that mocking opening ceremony of the Olympics that mocked Jesus, that mocked the seating that we have in our minds of the Last Supper. And I understand that he had a very freak lightning strike and was hospitalized. So let's pray for that man right now before we even begin. That was some news. Father God, we hold up this man who planned all that in his ignorance, in his lack of understanding. And Lord, we'd ask that you would use this experience that's happened to him. I mean, we know lightning comes down from heaven from you. Lightning was made by you. It is in your hands. It is something that we do not mess with, but something that we respect and regard when we see lightning go across the sky. And so, Father God, we hold him up, and we would ask that this would be the beginning of his walk towards his own personal salvation, his own personal salvation with you, that he would come to know you, that he would go from being in the darkness to being brought into the light, and that you would make out of him, as you have many of the disciples and many of today's disciples. We were walking our own way, which was darkness, and you saved us. You saved us from destruction and hell. That's what that little word saved means. People mock that word. We know that, Lord. But we also know that you have opened up the understanding of the word saved, and it is our greatest treasure, our salvation in you. So, Father God, we'd ask that you would work with the heart of this precious man and that he would be brought unto you. And we give you praise and glory to be able to pray for this today. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's mighty name, the Lord, the Savior, the soon coming King. Amen. All right, on this August 9th, we will be reading Ezra, Ezra 8, Ezra, meaning helps Ezra, this wonderful, wonderful prophet. And we will pick up with verse 21, Ezra chapter 8, picking up with verse 21. 21. And then I, Ezra, proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God. And Ahava means love. To seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed, Ezra says, to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. Very good word, right? 
And so we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayer. And I separated 12 of the leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and 10 of their brethren with them. And I weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the articles, the offering for the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered. He's carrying the gifts of the people. I weighed into their hand 650 talents of silver, silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 gold basins worth a thousand drachmas. And you know, all of these names of different weights and measurements, they are not in our everyday language, are they? So we really need to look those up and see exactly so we can translate that in our own minds. 20 gold basins worth a thousand drachmas and two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. And I said to them, you are holy to the Lord. The articles are holy also. And the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers' houses of Israel in Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. And you know, I did, I did look up silver. Uh, yesterday, and one ounce of silver is around $29, $30. One ounce. Okay? So the priests and the Levites received the silver and the gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem, to the house of our God. And then, after all of that, the fasting, the preparation, uh, all that Ezra did to prepare for this journey. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the 12th day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambush along the road. So we came to Jerusalem and we stayed there three days. Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Meramot, the son of Uriah the priest. And with him was Eleazar, <clears throat> the son of Phinehas. With them were the Levites, Josabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, the son of Benoi, with the number and weight of everything. Everything. All the weight was written down at that time. The children of those who had been carried away captive, who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, 12 bulls for all Israel. And so 12 would be one bull for each tribe. 96 rams, 77 lambs, and 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. And they delivered the king's orders to the king's satraps and the governors in the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people and the house of God. And we move right along to chapter 9, chapter 9 of Ezra. <clears throat> when these things were done, the leaders came to me saying, 
the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respect to the abomination of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. And isn't that who Satan would really go after? He would go after the leaders and the rulers. He always tries to control the high places of people. We see that in our own government at this present time. So when I heard this thing, when he heard that they had married the ladies of the forbidden peoples, I tore my garment and my robe and I plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard, and I sat down astonished. Ezra is just going to sit down out of the shock. And then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgression of those who have been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I arose from my fasting. And having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and I spread out my hands to the Lord my God. And I said, and I'll tell you what, listen up. Because this prayer that Ezra prays to God is awesome. A great example for you and me. Here we go. Oh my God, I am too ashamed and humiliated to lift up my face to you, my God. For our iniquities have risen higher than our heads and our guilt has grown up to the heavens. Since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been very guilty. And for our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests, have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliation as it is this day. And now, for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. Oh, that's what we're praying for today, my brothers and sisters, right? Revival. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage, but he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Walls are good. Walls are good. Hello, Americans. And now, O oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments, which you commanded by your servants, the prophets, saying, the land which you are entering to possess is an unclean land with the uncleanness of the peoples of the lands 
with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their impurity. Now, therefore, Ezra cries out to God, Therefore, do not give your daughters as wives for their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it, leave it as an inheritance to your children forever forever and after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt since you our god have punished us less than our iniquities deserve and have given us such deliverance as this should we again break your commandments <clears throat> a very good question for you and me this morning, today. How are we going to live this day that the Lord has given us? Are we going to break his commandments? Are we even going to go over his commandments so that they're fresh in our minds? I'm going to do that. And I, I, I urge you, I encourage you to do it too. And join in marriage with the people committing these abominations? Would you not be angry with us until you had consumed us so that there would be no remnant or survivor? Yeah, how about that? How about giving one minute's thought to if we continue to disobey, how about if he would just consume us all? Scary thought. Oh, Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant as it is this day. Here we are before you in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. Oh, my. And we conclude today's portion of the Old Testament. We move right along now to the New Testament, the New Covenant, and we are reading from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, 1 Corinthians 5. And here we go with the message of that day. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. Now, can you imagine what that statement means? Wow. That is one to have you sit quietly for a minute. That a man has his father's wife and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I indeed, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged as though I were present him who has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan. Throw him out. We don't know how to do that, do we? Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That would take great faith to do, wouldn't it? But are they going to ignore that this person has taken his father's wife? 
Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Oh, that's what we need today. We need people, all of the people, to come to be sincere, very sincere with truth, God's truth, not, not what the world is trying to call truth, but with God's truth. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of this world. <laughs> we, we can't go out of this world. We're here. So he's directing these comments to the believers not the people out in the world who don't know the Lord yet. So let's make sure we make that separation as we read this. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. And there again, that is a wonderful list of words for you and me to look up and really read the whole meaning. Sexually immoral, covetous, idolater, reviler, even look up drunkard, extortioner, that's a word to look up. For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. And my dear brothers and sisters, I have a note that that last part of that sentence is a quote. I have quotation marks around that. Put away from yourselves the evil person. And we can find that in Deuteronomy 17, verse 7. We can find it in Deuteronomy 19, verse 19. We can find it in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 21. We can find it in verse 24 of that same chapter. We can also find it in Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. I mean, that's a lot of places of verification. <clears throat> All right, my dear brothers and sisters, let's continue on with this exciting word. And now we will read Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Unto you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Unto you, O Lord, do I put my trust. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. 
In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated those who regard useless idols. But I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. What a beautiful words for today to start out your day, wherever you're headed, to work, to school, in your house, going on a trip, some meetings you have to go, whatever it is, whatever it is that your day has on its schedule. Shut out the enemy and welcome the Lord. We wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 21. Verses 1 and 2. So we start a new chapter here of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, like the rivers of water. The rivers of water are in the hand of the Lord, aren't they? And our rivers are running strong here as the rain continues with Hurricane Debbie kind of coming back on the shores here in Charleston, South Carolina. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Oh, we think we're right. We want to be right. And so sometimes every way that we think about, we think it's right. But the Lord weighs the heart. He's the one that weighs our heart to see if the way that we are walking, the way we are headed, what we think about today that's on the calendar, on the schedule, is that what the Lord wants? Have we even bothered to ask him? Sometimes it's amazing. You can even just ask, Lord, what do you want me to do today? But then sit quietly for a few minutes and give him a chance to answer and speak to your heart. I have found that some of those times I'm amazed at what the Lord says to me. And when I obey and do it, You just see the Lord in it all the way. And so does any of the other people that you involve in what you think God wants you to do today. So let's take that time. After I sign off, take that, just that extra moment and ask the Lord. All of us think we know what we're going to do. But let's take that little bit of time and say, Lord, is there something else that you want me to do? Or do you want me to cancel for another day what I thought I was going to do? Give the Lord a chance to continue being your personal Lord and Savior. Let's pray. 
Let's thank him. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, only because that was the way you said we needed to come. So we come in you, Jesus, and we give great thanksgiving to you, Lord Jesus, for coming down out of the heavens and going to the cross, suffering for us, taking our sins upon you on the cross. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for sending us Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we'd ask that you would direct us today, that you would be the one to speak to our hearts. For the Lord has left you here with us. And so we seek you, Holy Spirit, to govern and guide us as we go about this day. Precious Lord, we give great thanksgiving for leaving Holy Spirit. Lord, we are excited to know that you have returned to the right-hand side of your Father, and there you are, and you are interceding for us. That's what you said you were going to be doing. And we thank you for that, Lord. Let that be a very open thought for us. Let that be something that comes to our mind regularly, that you are now seated on the right-hand side of your Father again, and you are praying and interceding for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we hold up Israel. We hold her up. We hold up all the leadership, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, and all of those in the Knesset, the ruling body. And we'd ask, Lord, that they would seek you today, that they, each one, would seek their Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that they would speak, that they would sit in his presence and wait on him. Precious Lord, let them shut out all, all of the advice from all around in the world, from heads of places and countries who are not in your position, Israel, of war of enemies all around who have made it their life's work to destroy you. That's what you live with every day to face a new day. So Lord, cause us to have tender hearts. Cause us to intercede and pray night and day for you, for all of your people all over the world, all of the Jews wherever they are, whatever they are doing. Father God, it's a time when it's evident you are bringing your people home, even in the midst of war. So Lord, we'd ask that you would touch the hearts of those that you are saying, pack up, get ready. I'm bringing you home out of where you are. What a major decision. Precious Father, Help all of the IDF. Protect them by your mighty hand. Your mighty hand, Lord. Let them feel your presence. We thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness to continue this tiny country in the face of massive countries around who hate them, who want to see them, dead and gone. Lord, please, we pray, we seek you, and we bless you, Lord. I'd ask, Lord, that all of the people that you would call righteous, who are running for positions of government and authority in our coming election, 
Lord, be with them today. Speak to their hearts. Let them know what you want them to say, where you want them to go, what you want them to do. And Lord, we'd ask that all those who are on a journey of their own self-gain, who don't love America, who are obviously don't have programs and things that will be good for America. And we will judge what is good by what you have shown us in your word, what you say is good. Lord, let us have your wisdom, your knowledge, and your ways for this day as we lift up all of our prayers and our thanksgivings unto you and all of God's people. Went ahead with your prayers and at the proper time cried, Amen. So be it. Have a beautiful day in him. Love you so much. Bye-bye.